As I promised, uh, we're going to be talking a lot of things about IPv4 in this module, and uh, this small section is uh, IP about IPv4 fragmentation. And uh, what is the logic? So when the when the host is uh, the transport layer sending a packet, it needs to decide uh, what basically what size of the packet to use, what uh, to give to the network layer for delivery. And uh, as part of the project, uh, I, uh, I gave you the recommendation or specification to use the 512 as a maximum transmission unit. Uh, but uh, technically, network support bigger than 512. And um, there are some networks that support 8,000 uh, bytes as a MTU. And usually, kind of the, the semi-guaranteed number is uh, 500 bytes as MTU size. Again, this is not precise science. This number very, very like 1,400 something, 1,500 something. But around 1,500 bytes is a usual uh, standard size of, uh, of the pack. But again, given it's unknown, uh, host may decide to send different uh, size of the packets. And as you, as we saw in the header, uh, IP header technically allows you to send packets that uh, like 65,000 bytes because 16 bits designated for the um, IP packet size. So basically, the if a router receives the packet, that it cannot forward, uh, forward further because the link layer only supports a very small uh, MTU size. Like, you, for example, you received 8,000 bytes, but the link supports only 1,500 bytes. Then you have to do something. Or like in the picture, one host, one link supports the 1,500 bytes, and basically you can send the 1,300 bytes packet as as the same. As, this is, as a single frame. And at the next router, next link doesn't support that big packets and the packet needs to be, needs to be de de dealt with. And uh, this dealt with is uh, fragmentation. And so basically, I mean, th the concept is quite simple. So if you got the packet that is too big, you simply split it. And uh, at some point you have to reassemble it. Uh, with a few uh, s special consideration that IP protocol has uh, created. So first of all, a packet can be split multiple times. So for example, if you got to the point that you cannot forward packet bigger than um, 8,000 bytes, you split it like you split it to the MTU size of 1,500 bytes. So you split it and send it out. If at some point the fragment uh, still cannot be forwarded further, like for example in this case, you can fragment each fragment further. And you can do it multiple times depending on what the MTU sizes of the links. Uh, on the contrary, the reassembly is actually happening once. So like as soon as you split packet, whatever these fragments will go to the destination host as independent sub packets. And as soon as they receive, the destination host is actually responsible to wait for each of the fragments and uh, get the kind of get packets reassembled. Uh, this even kind of works when it works, uh, but there are a few problems. For example, uh, a lot of firewalls actually like to drop the fragmented packet, so it's not a great idea to send it. Uh, plus, uh, if we doing a lot of fragmentation, a uh, loss of a single fragment of, of the fragmented packet basically uh, makes the whole packet invalid, because you cannot reassemble packet if something is, was, uh, some fragment was dropped. And basically, uh, you may waste the resource of the network because if you fragmented the first hop and then there's like three more hops or like four more hops that the, the packet needs to be, all the fragments needs to forward. And uh, the first hop, the first fragment dropped and uh, the rest it didn't drop. You still wasted all those resources to forward all the fragments further and while the packet cannot be re reassembled. And plus you wasted resources at the destination host. So what I'm saying is not really recommended and there are actually mechanisms uh, to try to discover what is the MTU size. Like these are additional protocols based on ICMP. This one uh, we can talk about in additional part. And uh, normally transfer protocols try and, uh, as hard as possible to uh, avoid fragmentation. So to send to the maximum transmission unit for all the links uh, from host to the destination. And uh, for the um, basic fragmentation, we're using three fields in IPv4 protocol, the one that I highlighted last time and highlight on this, uh, on this slide. Uh, so first of all, we have this 16-bit identifier. So this one is basically a random number uh, that being set to the same number for all fragments. Um, it, it really depends on the implementation. Sometimes this 16-bit uh, identifier being randomly set by the source host. 
So basically when I'm generating IP packet, I randomly pick the number of four identifier and simply send uh, this packet further. And I set the flags to 000, so it's nothing being fragmented, and the fragment offset zero, so it's basically indicating that nothing is set. Alternatively, if uh, kind of this bit was not sent uh, or like the packet was not fragmented, the host that has been fragmenting the packet can set this 16-bit uh, value to some uh, random number, but to keep the same number for all fragments it created. Uh, second flags is simply, I mean, it's, they designated three bits, but te technically only two of these bits have been actually used. So one of them is uh, stating that it's uh, please don't fragment packets. So basically, if you receive a packet and you cannot send it further, you drop the packet. And this one is actually used as part of the MT discovery protocol because if you drop the packet, you have to notify the uh, sender that you cannot forward this packet. And if you're compliant with the IP specification, you have to send the response back. And uh, the bit number two, or least significant bit, is uh, to indicate that there is a more fragment or no fragment. So like if you uh, zero, meaning it's uh, either not fragmented packet or last uh, packet in the sequence. Uh, if uh, it's one, then more packets will follow. Uh, fragment offset is a little bit more complex field and because it doesn't really name the kind of doesn't designate number of packets in bytes, uh, but rather in eight byte blocks. So it involves a little bit of calculations, but uh, besides that, it's the same length. It's just you have to uh, properly calculate uh, this offset since the the, the first uh, packet in the, in the sequence. Uh, while these three fields are basically the ones that uh, de de define the fragmentation, whenever you do fragmentation, you actually will be adjusting two more fields in the packet. So you will adjust in total length because that's the one that is designating uh, like how big the IP packet is and the IP checksum is basically you need to recalculate uh, because you modified the packet. The next few slides trying to highlight uh, the IPv4 fragmentations in action. Uh, and what I'm trying to highlight is just to give you a very very basic example of how you Kind of given a packet, uh, if I'm saying, oh, oh, I cannot forward this packet, and this is my uh, maximum transmission unit is such and such, this is what you, I'm going to do. Uh, so in this specific example, I'm saying that the maximum transmission unit is around 532 uh, bytes if you include the header, or around 500 bytes if you just the payload size. Uh, so if you uh, get this original packet, the fields to, to pay attention to is the, the header length and some of the flags here and data length is data length. And as you can see, if you don't have any additional options, uh, you will have the, the total pa packet length will be 20 bytes more than uh, the actual data. So basically we are wasting 20 bytes, or wasting uh, 20 bytes of, um, of the header for the just IPv4 header. Uh, as you can see in this slide, it's already been assigned the fragment ID or by the sender host, and the rest are basically zero, indicating that nothing was fragmented. As soon as we start fragmenting stuff, uh, things are a little bit changing. Uh, so for example, in this case, if we need to split into three pieces, again, it can be split in different ways. It doesn't have to be exactly the same way, but usually uh, you get the maximum transmission unit, then you figure out what is the closest uh, uh, number of uh, that can be divided by eight equally that you can fit the whole frame, not just the mm, kind of payload, but the whole frame. Uh, so let's say if I had, uh, if I said the if the maximum transmission unit is uh, 550, then you probably would have to use this uh, 512 of the payload and the actual packet size of 532, because that's, that's all you can do. And the rest is just a very basic calculation. So you, you've got the packet, the first fragment will have a, say, almost the same thing. You just use the same fragment ID. You, you just change to uh, more fragments are coming and the, you, your offset is zero and you put whatever amount of data in the payload and you put the uh, updated value of the uh, total length of the packet. And this one should be uh, in uh, divide, uh, divisible by eight because in the next packet you have to specify offset uh, that is in, in numbers of uh, eight, uh, eight octets. And effectively, what the second packet is saying, it's uh, the same ID, it's still uh, more packets are coming, and I'm specifying the offset, 
and just recalculating the data and uh, the header. And I didn't specify here like other parts, uh, but potentially you can uh, update TTL fields, uh, but they, they will be the same uh, as in the original packet, uh, rather there will be a small change in, in checksum calculation. And finally, in this specific case, you still have uh, a little bit bytes left uh, to send out. Um, this doesn't have to be, so the, the amount of bytes in the last uh, fragment uh, don't have to be div divisible by eight because you, you don't need to specify any offset afterwards. Uh, but uh, you still have to specify some offset uh, like from the previous packets. So in this case, it will be 128 as the offset and more fragments are com uh, more fragments coming as a set to zero because this is the last packet. And the rest is basically the same thing, just recalculated the total length and recalculated uh, the actual adjusted the size of the, <laughs> of the payload. So that's the very, very basic fragment, kind of concept of fragmentation. And uh, to highlight that each individual fragment can be further fragmented, and really, it really depends on the specific router. Uh, on this picture, I'm just showing you um, how one of the packets can be fragmented. For example, uh, if uh, in one case uh, I could fit uh, the whole uh, 550 bytes or 532 bytes into the frame, into the link layer frame, I will just use those packets. But if I get to the point when I only can fit 500, then I am a little bit in a pickle. Because in this case, I still have to split the packet a little bit further, uh, like each of the packets, and one of them will be uh, like. 500 bytes, just 500 bytes with the 480 payload and a little bit of uh, uh, the other segment, uh, which is a little bit smaller, only like uh, 52 bytes. And the second packet still needs to be split into the uh, same concept. So uh, effectively, in this specific case, we will end up uh, having one, two, three, four, five uh, actual packets that the uh, original packet was fragmented. Uh, note, uh, this is kind of highlights one problem is because you don't do reassembly at each hop and you do reassembly at the end, uh, you don't have a luxury of uh, getting the packet and do the optimal split at each hop. You kind of, you only do split with the all information you have at each individual hop. And if uh, any subsequent splits are necessary, those can be uh, quite inefficient. So for example, in the worst case, you will have to split into the very big packet and like eight bytes of the payload in the second packet because that's that's the kind of artifact of the networking environment uh, that you send in packets. Uh, but the, the calculation here is it's quite simple. So you kind of, this is, the, the process was basically the same thing as before. So you got the packet and you start splitting it. Uh, with the, the small exception that the last packet, instead of uh, having this um, more fragments as zero as it was in the original packet, it's now uh, set to one because it's it was a part of the original fragmented packet that you refragmented. So you still uh, have one. So basically this bit, uh, the, the bit in the last packet is the same one uh, as in the original packet that you were splitting. So in here it was one, then it's, it's still one. In the previous example, it was zero, and the last packet is zero. So that's kind of basic logic if you want to uh, follow in this way. But the, the concept is quite simple. Uh, just look at the fragment ID, uh, this field, the offset, calculate a little bit, and you got uh, uh, to all the stuff. And this one is just highlighting what to do with the last packet. It's just, again, uh, the same uh, mathematics, it's just uh, for a different packet. Uh, okay, that's it for this uh, short uh, section. Uh, <laughs> uh, not too short as I was expecting. Uh, so again, uh, for IPv4, if you have a big packet and you don't know how to forward it, there is a mechanism to forward uh, to split the packet. Uh, as a small uh, highlight, as we're going to see further, uh, fragmentation was quite important when the IP um, specification was defined. At least it was considered quite important. So they put it as part of the main header. And if, even if you don't fragment packet, you're still wasting this uh, 32 bits or like eight, uh, four bits, uh, four bytes for each packet uh, because you consider the fragmentation. Uh, in IPv6, this did slightly different thing. They made a different assumption that fragmentation is needed, but uh, only when it's needed, and so they don't waste uh, space uh, for the uh, for the fragmentation in all single packet. But in any case, uh, majority of the time, uh, because of the various reasons, we don't use the uh, 
fragmentation. Uh, as I highlighted, the fragmentation provides the help. Uh, so it helps in cases when you uh, when you need to forward packet, but you cannot do it because MTU size of the link layer that you attach to is smaller than the packet you got. But it uh, also can uh, hurt uh, because be, I mean, obviously if you fragment too many in too many pieces, uh, then the loss of any single piece it can waste a lot of network resources. Okay, that's it uh, for this module uh, for this part. So see you next time.